I must confess that when I first read in the news about coronavirus outbreak, I thought it was fake news. I even resented that we use social media so irresponsibly in spreading news that are unfounded. I cannot believe myself that I resisted closer of Rayburn College even after receiving lockdown orders from the union government, the state government, Manipur University, and our district administration. However, because of counsel from loved ones, I finally and unwillingly issued a notice for closure of Rayburn College on the 26th March, 2020. No regret, I did the right thing. During the last century alone, the world has experienced five pandemics. Number one, the Spanish flu pandemic in 1918 killed one crore people. Number two, Asian flu pandemic in 1957 killed 11 lakhs. Number three, flu pandemic or Hong Kong flu in 1968 killed 10 lakhs. Number four, flu pandemic or swine flu in 2009 killed six lakhs. Number five, HIV or AIDS pandemic 1980 killed 2.5 crores, 25 million. Perhaps this is the greatest killer virus in our century. COVID-19, 2020 virus has been killing in thousands. It's killing men and women, even as I speak. The current global pandemic is unprecedented in the experience of almost everyone living. COVID-19 could be worse than all pandemic of the past if it goes at the present rate of its spreading speed across the globe. COVID-19 pandemic has its own distinctive character. States of emergency, nationwide lockdowns, travel bans, the closure of most public institutions and a dire economic repercussions due to this rampantly devastating virus. Thousands have died and thousands are dying. It's taking away lives from almost every nation like a killer in the night. It is spreading its wicked and brutal wings globally this virus does not respect age, position, and power. Thousands of people have died. Even as I speak, people are dying of this sinister coronavirus infection. In the midst of all this painful COVID-19 pandemic experience, nothing sticks out clearer and loftier than human vulnerability and helplessness. Mankind is vulnerable, weak, fragile, defenseless, and absolutely helpless. Before an infectious and merciless contagious virus which is not even visible to our naked eyes. Medical science is struggling to handle the situation. A hygienic and healthy lifestyle may be preventive and helpful to some extent. Social distancing may slow down the spread of the virus. Lockdown certainly will limit the evil arms of the virus. In this kind of perilous and trying times such as this, we can be overwhelmed by fear and anxiety and unable to reason and pray. We believers must seek help to the one who is able to help us and keep us from falling. 
Let me encourage you from God's word, Nehemiah 9, verse 12, tells us that he led and protected his people by day with a pillar of cloud and by night with a pillar of fire in the midst of deadly, fierce enemies. And God is doing that to believers. God is protecting us even if we don't know, but he is always on the watch out and is protecting us like a faithful girt. Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you, and the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harms. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over you. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. How comforting it is. We can trust on God's word. He is watching over our coming and going. He is always watching us. He never slumbers nor sleeps. Psalm 91, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is our refuge and our fortress. My God in whom I trust, surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Clearly speaking here, my friends, the promise from the word of God is that he will surely save us from fowler's snare and from coronavirus that is a deadly pestilence that is clearly written in his word he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge his faithfulness will be your shield and rampart like a hen covering the chickens like a hen covering his small ones, God is covering us with his feathers. God is covering us with his wings. He is putting us under his wings. And he says that his faithfulness will be a shield and a rampart, will be a shield on the top and will be a rampart around us, will cover us like a fortress. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midnight. God has promised us here in his word that he will watch over us. He will protect us from all plague, pestilences, and all fears. We will not have fear because he's protecting us always. God promises us that he will protect us 24 hours. God promises us here in his word that he will protect us from pestilence, which is caused by virus, which is today what we call coronavirus. God promised here in the scripture in Psalm 91, Verse 6, that God will protect us from coronavirus. Now, coronavirus is stalking. Here the Bible says that pestilence that stalks in the darkness, it's stalking us, it's going around the globe. Like a tiger, like a lion, running after his prey. Coronavirus is running after its prey. It's talking in the darkness. 
And here the Bible says that not only from coronavirus, but he will also protect us from plague. Plagues are caused by bacteria. So it doesn't matter what kind of disease it is. It doesn't matter whether it is caused by virus or by bacteria. God is there for us to protect us, to keep us safe, to deliver us from all these sicknesses, all these diseases, all these viruses, and all these bacteria. A thousand may fall at your sight, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. What a promise it is. Then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. If you love God, God is going to rescue you. Rescue from coronavirus. Rescue from any fear. Rescue from all diseases. I will protect him. God promised that he will protect us from the most dangerous situation. And he acknowledges my name. Now, the promise here is conditional. God promises that he will protect us from coronavirus, to be frank. If we love him, and if we acknowledge him, if we surrender our lives to him, he will call upon me, and I'll answer. If we call upon him, he'll answer. If we call upon him, he will listen to our cry and to our prayer. If we pray to him, God is there to listen to us. I will be with him in trouble. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us. And honor us with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? God is here to satisfy us. God is here to give us his salvation. Salvation from coronavirus. Salvation of our sinful lives. Our sinful soul. God is all for us. But my friends, it is conditional. He wants us to love him. He wants us to surrender our lives to him. He wants us to dwell with him in obedience. If we do that, God is there 100% faithful for us to protect us from coronavirus that is so fearful and it's a killer today. God has promised deliverance from every conceivable and inconceivable trouble in this world. He is our place of refuge and our fortress against our enemies. The greatest killer enemy for us right now is coronavirus. It is fierce and deadly. It has been quietly killing in thousands. No man, no country, no power under heaven can resist at this moment. We are not safe. And the world is not safe before the ugly face of a deadly, vicious coronavirus. Even the most developed countries are vulnerable and become easy targets of this sinister disease. Our only hope is in our God. The God of Jacob, the God of Abraham. Our only hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaac Watts in mid-17th century wrote, Our God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blasts, and our eternal home. Our help in ages past, and our hope for years to come. Our shelter from all troubles, our shelter from the stormy blasts, what an assurance it is. Isaac Watts experienced this, that God is our shelter in a most difficult situation. And today, God is our only shelter in this very difficult situation. Under the shadow of thy throne, thy saints have dwelt secure. Only under his shadow we will dwell secure. Sufficient is thy arm alone. Sufficient is thy arm alone. And our defense is sure. 
God is faithful. God's arm is sufficient to defend us from coronavirus. Oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our guard while trouble lasts. Trouble is going on. We don't know how long we will go through this perilous time. We don't know how long we will go through this fearful time. But be assured of this, that he is our guard while trouble lasts. As long as trouble lasts, God is faithful. He is faithful yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is eternal in our eternal home. Jesus will cover us with his feathers, and under his wings we will find refuge. His faithfulness will be our shield and rampart. He is our refuge and our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Into our hearts, let's welcome Jesus. Into our hearts, let's say, come Lord Jesus. Receive the blessing here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May God bless you.